Trouble in the presidential villa as gunshots were fired in a bid to force an aide of the president into self-isolation. And now that Governor of Edo State Godwin Obaseki gets disqualified from the all-progressive Congress APC primary election in Edo State, what will happen next? This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladeindi. The fear of COVID-19 might just have created a crisis in the presidential villa. Gunshots were aired at the presidential villa Abuja when First Lady Aisha Buhari, members of her immediate family, and her AD Kam Usman Shugaba attempted to force Sabiu Yusuf, a special assistant, to President Muhammadu Buhari into self-isolation as Yusuf had just returned from Lagos State, where his wife just delivered of a baby. Sabiu was said to have escaped after gunshots were fired by the First Lady's ADC. The attention of the Inspector General of Police, Muhammad Adamu, was drawn to the incident, and the AD came to the First Lady and all the security aides that accompanied her to Sabiu's residence were arrested. Joining us to throw more light on this discussion is Ahmed Buhari, a politician who will be joining us via Zoom. Ahmed, good evening. Hi, good evening. Good to be here. And also joining us in this conversation is Yinka Odumaki, spokesperson of Afeni Ferry, who is also joining us via Zoom. Good evening, Yinka Odumaki. Good evening. Yeah, let me start with uh, Yinka Odumaki. Um, a lot of people believe that uh, this should be a private matter. Why some say, as far as it relates to the first family, Nigerians cannot afford to keep quiet. Where do you stand on this issue? Well, clearly this is uh, a national embarrassment. We should not have had this in the first place. Yes. We know that COVID-19 has claimed the key of start to the president. Yes, we understand that the first lady, as a lady in the villa, will be concerned about safety and, of course, as far as our interstate movement. Yes, this particular person, the principal Circuit to the president was once isolated after the barrier of Abakari. Now, this is the second time this will be happening. There should have been protocols to deal with this. This is, should have been treated as a household matter. And the head of the house should have sorted this out quietly without it getting to the level of shooting like a gang war. When President Shinka said on your station here a few days ago that there is nobody in charge, unfortunately, this kind of unfortunate development is giving credence to that. Because if the question of isolates could lead to gunshots being fired as a gang war in our presidency, breach of protocols, security protocols and the rest of them were, were in trouble. And I think also this is also taking place in the politics at large. Issues that have been sorted by authorities that are not sorted, people are resorting to self-help. There is killings here and there. I think the presidency should uh, manage this embarrassment and ensure such a thing does not happen again. Okay, I, I I'll come back to you. Thanks for that opening statement. And uh, by the time we'll come back to you, we'll get uh, further perspective. And to you, uh, Buhari, um, I want to know your stand. Where do you belong in this issue? Should it be just a private issue or we should be concerned, like uh, Yinko Dumaki had stated? 
Well, thank you. Good evening, viewers. Um, first of all, I think it's important for us to clarify some things. You know, my name is Ahmed Buhari, and so I'm sure Uncle Yinka over there will be thinking that I, I'm one of Buhari's sons. I'm not... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I'm not, not it's not crime to be son. It's not crime no, to be yeah, son. Yeah, but it's also good to clarify that I'm not. Yes. Yeah, so that yeah. um, people do not think that... Um, Based on, on the fact that I'm a family member, I have come to speak on uh, family matters okay. that, are, Very yeah, that are going to Very be important. Wire. Um, the other thing that I need to also clarify is that I'm going to speak uh, uh, from the perspective of a Nigerian. And very clearly, from the way Uncle Yinka has actually laid the, laid the floor for this discussion, it is exactly what it is. This is a simple matter that would have been rectified without anybody even hearing. Um, the first lady in her right as a first lady, as the woman of the house, and as a Nigerian, has every right to call on anybody whatsoever within their space that she believes could be a threat to their, um, to their health safety. Not to forget that um, the only way we can actually you know, fight this COVID-19 situation is to ensure that we actually follow the guidelines as laid down by NCDC, Ministry of Health, World Health Organization. Nobody has the answers to these problems. Everybody is scared. There's real pandemonium, there's confusion, there's anxiety. And so if the young man, uh, the aide to the president had just returned from uh, Lagos and uh, he was seen to be a threat, by all means, I would expect that one person or the other would have raised an eyebrow to suggest that, that the young man, you know, isolate himself for the number of days that they think he's supposed to isolate himself to be sure that he's clean to stay within the premises because everybody is worried about getting uh, infected. The other thing that we need to, uh, in fact, I, I, I remember just um, a, a month ago, I was driving out of the area where I live. And as I was driving, I noticed this, um, app, this taxi has brought in somebody and I saw suitcases coming down from the vehicle. And I'm like, this doesn't look like the person has been here. The person actually probably just moved in or just came from wherever he has come in. I had to turn my car came back to the facility office and I said, I just saw a young man coming down from a vehicle. Do you guys want to go check and ensure that he's not a threat? If, if he's just coming down from anywhere that happens to be one of the hotspots for the COVID-19 crisis, please, could you advise him to take himself somewhere else and come back at a, at a later stage? You know, these matters are always there. These concerns are always there. But for, for, the, for the matter to have escalated to what I'm seeing in the news with regards to the gunshots, with regards to people getting arrested, as far as I'm concerned, it is un 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 it's unfortunate, and I okay. hope that um, and I hope that um, the people at the helm of affairs would manage this in such a situation that Nigerians do not panic any further. Okay, Nigerians should not panic any further. But before I go to Yinka, let me also do you also believe that uh, the, the 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 wife probably overreacted? Why don't you just speak to your husband, even if your husband is it's not uh, uh, you know. If it's not close to you, it should be a phone away, a call away from you. Why take the boo by the horn, move your family to chase someone who works with your husband? You know, like I said from the beginning, you know, I'm, I haven't seen the report of what really happened. Uh, all of the things that we're hearing are here says there's not been any official reports with regards to this matter. But at the same time, um, these people are human beings, really. They all make mistakes. And like from my opening statement, I didn't mention that we are all anxious, there's so much anxiety, there's so much fear, there's so much concern, there's so much panic, and people are bound to react or overreact as the case may be. In my opinion, I, I don't think at the time I saw that person coming into our, our living space that I had any time to go and call anybody like their father. I just needed to call the authorities responsible to get that person out of the space so that we do not become a, a threat to whatever health situation that was going on. So I, in my opinion still, I, I just think that sometimes when this kind of news come into the space, Nigerians dwell so much on them. I would have been hoping and wishing that we were talking about more policies or revisit on policies. How is the NCDC working on this? Uh, how well is the Nigerian government handling the situation of COVID-19? So that we do not um, keep deviating from the real picture when we're supposed to focus on the real picture. Okay. Uh, uh, Yika, what do you have to say about... Uh, the spokesman of the presidency, at least, they managed to release a statement. And what he said is, it appears the opposition or the critics of the government just want to jump on this rather than facing their business. That why don't we wait for the police to come out, out of their investigation rather than some of these uh, comments coming from some quarters? 
I'm sorry that statement from the previous spokesman uh, is a bit below it. In a situation where we have the first lady of the country on the front pages of newspapers, on Twitter everywhere, shouting about her age, being detained. It's not an issue you just say, oh, it doesn't matter. It's your position. This cannot be your position. This is clearly an issue, like my brother said there, that should not have gone this far, that should not have come to this point, that, in, 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 and in actual fact, when you hear most of the issues that are like this, that we have had from the presidency in recent time, it has been between the president's wife and the relatives of the president. Why, why is it that, I mean, the gentleman who is involved in this is a nephew of the president. I don't think any other uh, worker in the presidency will get the issue with the wife of the president up to the point that the A's will start to start shooting guns. I, I agree with you that there will be reaction here and there, but there's an underlying factor. So we should, they, they should face the issue address the issue and let apologize to Nigerians right, and justify what's not justifiable or try to blame it on uh, other people. Two days before this, when there was no such issue in the presidency, did any opposition come up to comment I know this this should be the first family? No. There's an issue that is wrong. Let's deal with it and ensure it does not happen again. But, but let's look at it. I know you have been a spokesman of uh, Afeni Ferry. You've also been a spokesman to the president while he was a presidential candidate. And there's been so much talk about the, the information managers not releasing statements. Do you blame them this time around for just releasing a test statement? And, uh, you know, because as we speak, like Buhari uh, highlighted, we are left with speculation. So when should we speak and when should we not speak? And don't also forget what the first lady said at the time when he accused the, the, the media, the managers of not speaking at the right time. What's your take, your objective view on this? Hello? Yeah, what's your objective view of, of, on this, that uh, the media managers, I mean, the information managers haven't said something very concrete to, you know, to take us out of speculation? You, you see, in my, in my opinion, right, they, we, are always, we are going to be having this kind of situations repeating themselves over and over and over again. The simple fact remains that the information managers, as, as it is right now, attached to this administration, are not helping matters. You know, before we even started talking about the situation at the villa, don't forget that the villa is a home. It's like a home, like all our homes. And whenever you find a new home, there are always cri crises and chaos and fightings and what have you. You know, so I like leaving family matters to families to, to settle. But the fact that this family happens to be the first family, it becomes our general concern. But you see, the way we can see so much news in the space right now, mostly you will call fake news. Something would come out and a few weeks later, you start realizing that all of that you read wasn't true. It is the simple fact that we are not getting the media managers of the administration reaching out to the Nigerian people at the right time in the right format. I keep saying one thing. There's nothing that stops the spokesperson of the president or the minister of information to ensure that they have a daily interference or a daily interaction with, the, with press people. Let press people go to the villa with their concerns and ask questions. You can do it. You can have, give a 30 minutes uh, press briefing and you know, respond to all the questions that come from the press people. When you do that, when we start seeing news on other blogs, we will tell people that, no, we're going to wait for 6 o'clock because we know that that is where the real information is going to come out with regards to the government. But if we keep having things haphazardly like this, it's going to continue creating this unnecessary friction, unnecessary uh, uh, distrust and, and, and concern from genuine concerns from Nigerians. Because at the end of the day, 
There are Nigerians who genuinely want to see the president succeed. There are Nigerians who genuinely want to get the right information so that they will know exactly how to function. But right now, everything, everything just seems to be all over the place, and it's, it's really, really making it very difficult for anybody to concentrate and say, you know what, this is the real focus, this is the real areas that we, we should focus on and ensure that we help ensure that we help this government succeed. As it is right now, that is not the case. Okay. As it is, that's not the case. And Inka, let me take the question back to you. We, we, we understand that uh, there was an audio loss in our communication. So let me take it back. I said, as someone who has been a spokesman and someone who has also been a spokesman to the man in power when he was a presidential candidate, I'm asking that um, where do we draw the line? Why sh should the information managers be blamed for not speaking up for a matter that has to do with family? Oh, okay. So there, uh, are two, there, there are two things involved there. Okay, let One is family. One is family. And the other part is the first house of the country. So, you know, you know, they do not have a choice not to speak about it in as much as it is happening within that jurisdiction. So it is expected that a clear understanding of this situation must have been discussed by now by the aides handling the president to ensure that we, we maintain calm across board so Nigerians understand that, look, whatever it is you are reading in the news is not as big as that, or whatever you're reading in the news is actually bigger than that. This is the real situation, and this is how we're planning, or this is how we're tackling it, so that we can maintain some sort of decorum across board. Nigerians, are, we don't need this kind of distraction right now, in my opinion. I think it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uncalled for, to be honest. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for always rescuing Yinka when he couldn't hear me. So I'm taking I the question want, back to him. I don't want to make it Thank right. you. Let, let thank me you, go Barry. back to him. I'm saying that, um, I, I don't know, I'm not saying Buari was not correct with his response, but I feel that you, as an information manager yourself, you've been a spokesman to President Buari when he was a candidate. So I'm saying that should the information managers be blamed for not speaking clearly on this issue? Well, I think that, he, like I said, Mr. President is a very taciturn man. He doesn't speak much. So when you manage such a man, then you have to be extra professional. In this kind of matter, why they haven't tried to sort out to get the family perspective, the president view, there are things they could have managed immediately. Not to allow them to go for one, two days before they now start coming about blaming the opposition or blaming those who are talking about it. I think the media managers should be more proactive and get more professional in dealing with the matters. Yes, like what I was saying, yes, the family issue is involved, but there's also a public issue. And when you are leading a country, you're, you're, there's a thin line between your personal life your public life and the country. And so I will say, from the man I know, from the president, he will not easily react to such a thing. Mm. But it's because of the information manager to doubt the situation without necessarily signing committer, but not to allow things to just drag on like this, just be looking at this on Nigerians, and then come up and start blaming any opposition or blaming anybody, Inca, that's not the way to go. Let me put you on the spot. I, I want to be well guided. I'm saying, in clear terms, what do you mean by they should be professional? If you were to be in their shoes, how will you communicate this? If you hadn't gotten a go ahead, you remember the story of uh, Professor Gambari when the information managers were blamed, when they were not given a go ahead to go to the public. This, is, this goes beyond the Gambari issue. This is an issue of shooting in the, in the Peña Villa. First of all, is to have to douse the tension this kind of story was going to generate. They needed not to commit what will happen, but to assure the public that the presence is dealing with this matter, everything will sorted out. While What's next, what next should be done is being done. But to allow the situation to go to the situation that the first lady being on uh, Twitter, she was on the front pages of nearly all the super published in Nigeria yesterday, talking about the detention of her aides. By that time, 
the public is already angered before you are coming out. It should not be so. The minute the story was hitting the public, they should have been putting some statement there to douse the, 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 the tension. This will, this will generate in the country before you now get more clarified and authorized position on the matter, which will now, which will now feel come after, first of all, we have created some damage control. Okay, I, I, I'll come back to you. So, Buhari, let's look at the issues since you are trying to, you know, look at it from the private angle. Now, the, the, the first lady has asked for the release of, his, uh, of our ADC. Has she done anything wrong with her move? This is a woman whom the chief of staff to her husband died of COVID. This is a woman who probably her daughter was subjected to isolation when she came back into country. So in what way has she embarrassed her husband by being, in quote, proactive? Let me start by saying Aisha Buhari is a human being. You know, she might be a celebrity right now, like how we have all the celebrities around the country. Um, I, keep, I keep telling people, if tomorrow, if tomorrow anything happens in the villa, we're going to talk about it. But it, it, I mean, these things happen in every home. There are homes that I, I can assure you today, they had worse things than that. There was shooting, there was police arresting, but you're not going to see it in the front pages like how you're going to see that which is happening in the villa. And the villa, like uh, Uncle Yinka said, it's, it's our concern because that is the central hub of how we function as a country right now. Whatever is going to keep the, the, the president in the most uh, safest uh, position to think for the country and operate the governors uh, as best as he can is what is our paramount concern. But you see, um, I, I think there's been some overreaction. I think, and, and, the need, and the overreaction that is going on right now is the lack of professionalism, in my opinion, on how some of these things have been handled. I would have expected that at the time this was happening in the villa, nobody else was going to hear. This is not the first time we've had people occupy the villa. Many things happen in the villa that you will never hear. The best you can get is insiders talking about it on uh, at beer parlors, not necessarily reaching the media, media space. And this is because people who handle the media space are always top notch to ensure that they curtail this kind of excesses before they go out of hand. And kudos to Uncle Inka. I remember during the time he was a spokesperson to uh, President Buhari when he was a candidate under the APC, the, 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 the you know, remarkable job he did to ensure that you know, information was coming out as it went due. There was constant, constant communication with the people. And things like that were the things that you know, caught the attention of many Nigerians to say, maybe this is the way we needed to go. Um, so in my opinion, I think some of these things can be handled off social media. Social media is there, yes. People find it as the next big space to communicate with the general public. But when you occupy the biggest office, one of the biggest offices in the country, you must be able to manage yourself in such a way that you do not, you are not seen as somebody that is actually adding fuel to the fire. So in my opinion, um, mistakes have been made. Um, I, I, I am appealing that Nigerians would actually, like I said, not get carried away. Let us look at the figures of the COVID-19 that are increasing. What are we not doing right? Are people not following the policies as, as, as uh, spe uh, specified by the NCDC and the Minister of, Minister of Health? Those are the things. For me, those are the things that bother me. For the re with regards to the release of our AIDS, it has now become a police matter. There's absolutely nothing that she can do. She might be the first lady, but she cannot be bigger than the law. Absolutely nobody can be bigger than the law. As a matter of fact, even the president at this stage should be subjected to allowing the police run a proper investigation and ensure that the right people who have actually gone beyond their boundaries are being brought to book. This is, my, this is how I see it. Okay. Uh, um, and that might be your last take for this uh, segment. But before we go, let me get the final brief from uh, Yinka Odumaki. Uh, before you say something, I just want to put it on record that uh, as far as the media managers, the information managers are concerned, uh, when we approached them, they were reminded that a statement has already been released to that, in that regard. And the statement explains that let us allow the police to do their investigation, then we will know uh, that uh, this is the right thing to do and they do not want to influence the president. Is that sufficient for you, Yinka Odumaki, as we have your final comment on this? Well, at this point now, the damage is already done. And uh, 
like Buhari said, now at this point, police are investigating. They have to do their job. Nobody can stop it at, at this point. Even if it had not come to this public, you can say, okay, well, they are still managing the thing. But since it has come to the public and a security breach involved, really, there has to be a uh, proper investigation. But the, like I said, our media managers around the president have to up their game and uh, ensure that when embarrassing things like this happen, there's a better approach to it so that there's sufficient damage control. Because once we damage the presidency, we are damaging us. The presidency is, 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 is I mean, represent the country. And we cannot just treat anyhow. If this were happening within their private family, yes. But as the first family in the country, what happens there has a lot of marks on us as a whole country. And that's why we should be careful and ensure that we do better things. And thank you so much, Yinka Odumaki, the spokesperson of Afeni Ferry. And many thanks to you, uh, Ahmed. Buhari, I have to be careful not to call you Muhammad Buhari for your time, <laughs> <laughs> a politician. And maybe I should also put it on record, a presidential uh, candidate in the last election. Thank you for your time. Yes. And thank you thank for you staying so with us, our viewers. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, now that the governor of Edo State has been disqualified from the APC primaries, could there be a possibility of mass defection from Edo State APC? This is up for discussion. Stay with us.